friends and welcome. Today we're going to tackle another, what we call this an organizational project. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is organizational and printing up yeah. the, the house. We're going to build a, a picture display that can be easily changed. You know, you can mm -hmm. change the pictures and also a, a glass holder, even for your sunglasses or your reading glasses and, and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to use again, as we always do, remnants. Remnants? Scraps. <laughs> scraps. And here are some of our scraps. We decided to go with cedar, even though this will be an inside project. But cedar is a good wood for purposes of look, right? It, it stains very well, it looks very well, and it smells very well. Well, it has a really beautiful grain to it. And depending on the piece, you can see a lot of different grain. And so if you want to make this sort of a, a pretty piece as well, you can use the grain to highlight that. And I already mentioned, just for reference, uh, we decided about 18 inches, right? You mm -hmm. can make it any length we want. Within 18 inches will look the best. Right. But you can change it. The techniques will be the same regardless of how long you decide to go. So today we're going to take a board like this, which is a picket fence cedar board. And we're going to turn it into this beautiful glass organization and picture display. A microsaw is a great option for this cut, but it is not necessary. A hand saw can do that, especially in the soft wood we're using. So we start by cutting our first piece to length, which again, as we said, is 18 inches. Now we're going to cut the second piece identical to the first one. Like we always do when we only have a couple of cuts to make, we don't have a lot of repetitive cuts, we only need two pieces. We're going to use the first piece to cut the exact length of the second piece, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we don't measure, we only so far in this project measured once. And hopefully we'll keep it that way, right? Mm -hmm. The next step will be to make sure they are the same uh, thickness. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to join them, so we might actually do it the right way this time and use the joiner. Use the joiner? Wow. Okay. If you don't have a joiner, you can you can actually use your uh, table saw if you have a table saw, or you can sand. So as you can post hopefully see, the thickness of these two boards is not the same, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to use our thickness planer, which is its job, to actually make it the, the same dimension, right? The reason why this one is thinner is because we had previously planed this one for a different project. We ended up not using it, so we still had it, and that's why it's much thinner than that one. Now what would you do if you don't have a thickness planer, is you can actually sand it down to the correct dimension, right? Mm -hmm. And if you do that, take a pencil and make marks so you can see them disappear and know when you've taken a full layer off. Right. A thickness planer, as its name implies, is a great tool to reduce the thickness of any material and make two boards the same thickness. However, it is not necessary. You can use a hand planer to do the same job, or if you have nothing else, you can actually sand two boards to the same thickness. And you can start where the two boards meet, so you can have a nice join and then feather it out so you will not take as much time. We do have a thickness planer, so in this case we decided to use it because this is a small piece and it would really look very strange if we did not use a thickness planer to have the two jointed boards the same thickness. Again, there is more than a way in woodworking to do a thing and if you cannot get the two boards the same thickness, you can use that little separation as a focal point of your piece. Be creative. As I have said before, you do not have to use the tools that we're using. We're using them because we have them and we're using them because we want to show you how to use them and what its tool is used for in case you want to know. We are going to continue using those tools but we are going to always provide alternatives. Again, a hand planer will do great here but if you do not have one, do not fret. So we're done with our planer and for this little project we're going to use more tools than we've used in many projects because now we're going to put the planer away and bring the, our joiner out. So here's our joiner, a tool we don't use as often as we should, but today we're going to try to bring every tool we own out to build one of our simplest projects. As you can see, our edge here needs a little bit of help. So we're going to show you the before and then the after. The key to successfully using a joiner is to apply constant pressure as you're moving the piece through the knives. This is a very small joiner, but a very capable one. And while we don't use it often, it generates really great results as you're going to see in this very project. 
And as you can see, there is a big difference, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So we're going to do it on the other edge that we need to join, even though that looks pretty good. Do you want to test it first or do it? Let's, I mean, we can show them what the difference is going to be, and you can see how it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good, but we'll go ahead and do one of the edges so that it'll join a little more seamlessly. Okay, and we need to keep in mind which edges we're joining, which edges. Two well-jointed boards will combine together in a seamless way, and it is very hard sometimes to even see where the join is. So a join can be very valuable for projects like this one. Edges. And now we're going to glue them and wait for glue to wait. Glue to wait? To wait? Wait for glue to dry. <laughs> <laughs> in preparation for the gluing, we are having two clamps that they are wide enough to, to clap the two pieces together. We put some uh, wax paper underneath so we're not going to have any glue squeeze out that can glue them to our table, which will not be a desirable outcome, right? Right. And then glue. So now we are starting uh, squeezing the the two clamps and you can see a little bit of squeeze out which is exactly what we want. That means we have not put excessive glue but we have enough that it is up, uh, going uniformly through over, right? You see a little bit of squeeze out through the whole joint. Now we do not wipe the squeeze out, just a reminder. Even though we do not plan to stain this, are we going to stain it or we're going to use oil or what? Oil or something. But regardless, you get a much better finish if you do not wipe it. Because wiping the glue presses the glue into the, the fiber the of, the, of the wood and that does not stain or finish correctly. So now you're going to just let the glue dry. And so anything that is uh, squeezed out once it's dry, we'll use this blade, this plastic blade and scrape it. Yep. another 18 piece that we're going to create the rail with and now we're going to go to our table saw or our router table I haven't decided yet to create a groove and you're going to see in a moment how we'll do that and why I decided to go with the table saw because it was already set up and I didn't want to get out my router table here as you can see we're making a very small cut it's about one eighth of an inch which is the width of most table saw blades and in this case our blade is slightly bigger than that because these are going to be the thickness of uh, paper you don't need it to be much bigger than that this is a very acceptable width and then we're going to do it on both sides because it's easier to do it now that the piece has this dimension so the idea is that we want to cut this piece in half right uh -huh. because we don't want to damage this piece because it's the dimension we want we're going to use the off cut this is the other part of this piece uh -huh. from our scrap as a test right and i'm going to now we need to raise this because we want it to go completely through. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a small gap. Guesstimating the exact center rarely works unless you're making a YouTube video and you try to show people how to figure it out. I'm going to wait for the saw to stop. And if we're in the half point, the blade should be able to slide in there. And it does, right? You see that? So now we know, so after you finish your cut, turn it over, and if it goes through, you know that both sides now are the same, right? Mm -hmm. Because we, we flipped it over, correct? Right, and we made it even. Mm -hmm. Now if you are not in the correct spot, cut this part and, and adjust, right. right or left, depending on where you need to be. Right. So we know this is the correct dimension now, so we're going to cut our actual piece. Never put pressure behind the blade. Always put pressure to keep your piece in place in front of the blade and never on the blade itself or behind the blade. If you do so, you're likely to bind the blade and actually lead to an accident or definitely an uncomfortable situation. The best way is to keep a very, very steady pressure, a steady feed rate and have any pressure you have before the blade, before the wood enters. I'm doing a light sanding just because cedar does come with a little bit of fluff to it. I want to make sure it's going to be really a tight connection that we make. 
and that it's not rough to the touch. We're using our power sander here to make our join invisible. Really it is not needed because we have thickness joined the, the two pieces and they have a very very good connection. However a light sanding makes even the little join line that shows virtually disappear. If you do not have a thickness planer then using the sander will be the tool you need to use to make the join look smoother and give you a better uh, result. Otherwise you can hand sand the piece or not even sand it at all. The planer leaves a very nice smooth surface that very high grid paper is required to even emulate. So in most cases if you use sandpaper after you join or after you plane you're going to get a worse not better surface. So we're ready to attach our rails and there are two ways to do that. If you want the pictures to be more towards the back you can install with the groove towards the back of the what we call that the board I guess. Yeah or you can turn it over and you can have the pictures be on the outside and we are more inclined for this uh, orientation okay. right now if you also if you put it the other orientation and you want to make uh, the groove a little bit bigger you just do another pass with your table saw we just chose to do a single pass right right let's do a dry fit let's see if with the pictures will fit there and of course you can also bend the picture you don't have to slide them in but you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. Want to put more? Sure. It should fit free, right? Because we have 18 inches. Is that what well, we got? Yeah, we did cut 18 inches. Now this is a four by six picture. So that's not the right. Yeah, this is a three by three so by let's five. Put all four by six. So you just want to know which pictures you're you're doing this for. Although technically the three by five would fit as well, it just wouldn't fit in the top groove. It would rest in it, but yeah, it would rest in the bottom groove and then. It is very easy to insert and change the pictures in very normal intervals. So this makes for a very great display. So that is the general idea, right? Mm -hmm. So the top one would be flush with the top. Is that what you wanted? Yep. And the bottom just the size of the picture you want. And of course you could change this dimension and have them this way if you want them to have vertical. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're adding glue to the side that's going to go against the wall piece. Using our preferred tool for smoothing glue. Mm. Yep. Making sure it's lined up. Can get this one at the yeah. edge. And then we're going to put some brad nails in. don't really need them this is for us to be impatient with and you'll notice that we did it really close to the edge and that's because this is where the groove is and we right. don't want to go through the groove we just wanted to get it to the edge here all right I guess we need to use the picture to find out the correct we need to mark it though because we need to take it off well actually no the two of you can do it but we need to mark it because I have to put glue on it okay is that where you want it well, put a second picture though, because you might not be parallel. Mm -hmm. Should have just a little bit of play. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is our late cat peanut. Late cat peanut. Yeah, she was never late for dinner, but <laughs> she lived to be 18 years. How long she lived? Uh, she she was and I guess apply some glue. Do not overdo it with glue, guys, right? Do not underdo it either. Do not underdo it. Do not overdo it. Just right. right. Just do it. Just like Goldilocks and the three bears. Are we running out of glue? No. I just didn't want to overdo the glue on this one. Trying to prevent a bunch of screws out. So. Okay. 
You want to do it? I'm filming. Again, this step is not necessary if you're patient enough to wait for overnight, right? If you are not, it is necessary. Oh, or if you're filming a project, we'll do it. Now we have it upside down. So this is the correct orientation. We're going to continue with the process even though the glue has not dried yet. But in general, let glue dry. You can also use tacks here, but we chose brass screws. So we've stretched out the belt that we're using as our straps and we're screwing it into the cedar mm -hmm. plank. We're using fairly small screws, they're brass Very screws. Small. And they're kind of a, a brass color, so mm -hmm. they're kind of decorative as well. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to want to make a little bulge okay. there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think we have to make sure we're doing the right spacing. Don't okay. you? Yeah. Before, so you want to stop? So we need a storyboard to make sure that this line will be parallel to this because that will be visible, right? Mm -hmm. To the naked eye. So we went to our scrap and we found a piece of scrap that's almost correct, but not quite. So we're going to go and take about a, an eighth of an inch off and we think that will be correct, but we're going to find the correct distance. So we're going to lay it next to it to ensure that all our distances are correct, right? Because right. this line, the human eye is very sensitive to parallel lines, right? And if this is not parallel, it will be very obviously evident. I think it's a little tight. It is a little tight. It is. So another sixteenth off and this is perfect now, right? Yep. So now we're going to create little bulges and we're going to attach. And this is a rare for us, but you see we're using uh, a manual screwdriver. Oh no. I know. You need to make sure that this is not tight so you can uh, uh, put your sunglasses through it. At least one of the two pieces of the sunglasses. Other than that, this is a very straightforward process. And the reason we do that is because we do not want to damage the board, right? Because cedar is pretty soft, and if you use the power tools, it could end up splitting. Well, and all these screws are in the same axis. Right. So they act like a wedge. If you do it too much, you're going to split it straight there, right? Right. That's not down far enough. That's down as it could go. We're making sure that the spacing in between the screws is symmetrical so that the eye is pleased with the spacing. And we're going to finish it up all the way to the end. Right. So we're recording, recording, we are engraving. Uh, where the pictures will go, uh, so that if the picture, if there are no pictures in there, you're waiting to change them out or something, you'll have a message that won't just be completely plain. And it's going a little bit slow because you're engraving it pretty deeply. It's not going very slow. It's a thousand. The speed is a thousand. Okay. There's just just letters, so there's not a lot of engraving. Right. Way. So it's not an image. It's just a word. And uh, we'll come back and show you what that looks like. So our easy graving, as you can see, is done. And we just wanted something simple, but you can embellish that, right? I mean, you can right. put whatever you want there. Mm -hmm. For us, if you don't have pictures, say memories, remind you to put pictures there, right? Yeah, yeah. Plus, if it is empty, it's just not a, a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. Just something there. And if you wanted to, you could even just have a picture on either side there, showing that it is memories of... of whatever, yeah. yeah. Excellent. So we decided to use uh, store-bought uh, picture hangers to attach it to our wall. And these are simple and very easy for everyone to, to put. Of course, you can use uh, keyholes if you want. 
and we have the capability of doing that, but we wanted to make the project uh, straightforward for everyone. Release and repeat. What do you want to check? I think it's fine because it, I put it through both of the. This is not a very exciting part, but if you want to hang it on your wall, you need to do that. Again, this will not have a lot of weight on it, right? Right. So this is more than adequate, and as you can see, sparing no expense, we're using a sanding block to decide the distance from the edge for our uh, hanger here. So Our spacing is spot on. Nothing but uh, high-tech equipment for us. Now the advantage here is that this is very soft wood and usually a little bit of pressure with your finger will hold the screw, in, uh, the, screw the nail in place so then you can complete the assembly. And with one last nail, this project will be one for the books, right? Yep. Yeah. There we go. Excellent. Well folks, this is our project for today. I'm not sure what we're going to call it, but uh, it is another little organizational piece. This is a, a fast project, maybe a couple of hours, right? Mm -hmm. And if Mrs. DIY wants to remove the pictures, this is to remind you, if you don't have pictures, to add pictures, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can put anything you want there. We thought memories was a cute word. But you can do whatever you want there, right? And also you can display panoramic pictures. Yep. If you have any panoramics, right? Mm -hmm. And of course you can change this distance for any different size pictures you want. We have it stationary with a little more work. You can make this actually movable, right? Mm -hmm. we, we didn't do that because we wanted to keep it simple. So let's talk about cost. For us, it was $4. Not even more, actually, because we bought this in a treasure hunting store mm -hmm. that originally was a Belgian we repurposed to be a, a sunglass holder. Right. And that was four dollars, but we still have the majority of it left, right? So for three of them. For three of them. Right. And out of the one we use, we still have that left. Right. So. So, so we bought the dollar, very generously, right? Right. So this was a dollar. The boards for us were free because they were eminence. But if you were to buy this in the store, it's only about three dollars, right? based on where you live, between three and four dollars in the US today in 2023 crazy prices. So not very expensive even to from the beginning. We're talking about a five dollar project here. Mm -hmm. And easily as you can see you can batch it, you can make them for gifts. Right. Give them to people, personalize them, and all if, kinds of things. If you don't have the laser like we happen to have, you can get stencils, you can hand letter this, you can do whatever you want to decorate that. That's not a necessity, but that is just something that we're able to do. What was the hardest part of this? We don't know. It wasn't really hard. No, it wasn't really. All right, friends. Well, this is our project for today. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, we would appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't, press the other button twice. There, like, subscribe. Let us know, did you like this project and would you like similar projects from our channels in the future? From Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY and Elpida, let's build this together.